Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I'm Dr. Anthony Corral and from Admiral Dentistry and I'm talking a little bit about today about uh, a sequence of courses that I've created, a library of courses to be honest, that kind of talks about what I think is required to run a successful dental practice. Um, and as in today's day and age when we're trying to get things faster and quicker and get these pearls um, understood better, you really want to bring it down to the essence of it. So what I want to talk about today are some of the best practices to having a successful dental practice and what are those three main pillars. And I want to talk to you about, you know, a few minutes today just to kind of give you a taste of what is in the library of courses. Um, the three main the best practices and the three main pillars are let's not overcomplicate things. We want to get patients in the door. And so when we talk about getting patients in the door, everyone wants to spend all this time uh, marketing and spending money on lead generation, SEO, and all these different things. And of course, those things can be important, but I think nothing is more important than investing in your staff and really working on training and teaching that those staff members. And so when I talk about getting patients in the door, I want to know when the patients are first reaching out to the practice, are we doing everything that we can to have the most successful interaction, the most warm, enthusiastic reaction? In order to do that, you've got to have somebody who's enthusiastic at the front desk and who's well coached. And so I spend a lot of time sitting down with my staff members and talking through those things of, why we use the words we use and it's how it's important to memorize them. It's not exact scripting, but it's just kind of like a workflow of what we do for these front desks. So the first thing I want to talk about is how our front desk, we want to identify the types of callers. We want to identify the main types of callers to get the patients in the door. And so if we can do that, then we're going to be able to identify those types of callers, identify what their needs are, ask questions, have build a relationship in that dialogue to really lock them in to get them to make an appointment. So once again, it's in the words. So whenever we want have a patient that calls into the office, the four main types of callers that we have, of course, is a new patient caller. They want to just become a new patient. Those are pretty simple. We have our profi callers. We have shopper callers and we have emergency callers. So when we can divide those four types of callers into their categories and, and the front desk can identify them, we can really build that start to build that relationship. I'm going to give you a little example that we go really in depth on the, in my library about. Uh, for example, let's talk about a shopper caller really quick. A shopper caller is probably one of my favorite types of callers because they are calling to ask what the cost of a procedure is. They're calling to ask, how much is a crown, how much is an implant, uh, how much are fillings. And what we really want to do is when somebody calls that's a shopper caller, we want to tell the patient, ask them, they're calling for a crown. Ask them who told them that they needed a crown. We want to identify that. They may think that they need one or maybe another doctor has told them and they're looking for a second opinion. But now we can come, come across as kind of an expert and, and having that credibility and that expertise is going to go a long way. So if somebody calls in and asks if they are, uh, that they needed a crown and the first question that our staff is kind of trained about is who's told you you needed a crown? How many do you need? Uh, and, and if it's a second opinion and they've been told by someone else, they're calling because they really haven't built that relationship with their doctor to trust that what they're saying is either accurate or all things being equal, they just want to go somewhere cheaper. So what we want to do is identify, the, the goal is to get the patient in the door. That's the number one thing. That's what we're talking about, the three pillars today. So in order to get them in the door, what we typically do is we try to confuse them a little bit by asking them, who told you you needed a crown? We want to talk about how many crowns you need and thirdly, what materials those crowns are made out of. Because we can say, what well, is it a porcelain fused a metal crown? Is it a, a Cirac crown? Is it an all porcelain crown? Is it a wool ceram crown? Is it a zirconia crown? I mean, we even have printed crowns these days. So there's so many different ways. When, when we start to ask these questions to the patient, they say, well, I've never even thought about that. They didn't tell me what type of crown I was. You come across as being more engaged and taking those few minutes during these phone calls of these net, when you can identify the types of callers that come in, you really work to build a, 
a successful experience right off the bat. So that's one of the things that we do to get the patients in the door is identifying those four types of callers and using scripted words. And we can really go into that in the, in the library. Um, the next part that I like to talk about in best practices to a success, successful, successful dental practice is having an exceptional new patient experience. Making sure that new patient experience is great from the start, from the beginning to the end. One of the first things I want to do on a new patient experience is when that patient comes in the door that somebody's greeting them, particularly, um, you know, having... I hate having glass sliders and something like that. And we, we've, I've bought practices in the past that had those that are frosted glass. And we've taken that up, try to open up the practice some. But we want those patients to come in and have a really great uh, experience. We have a new patient uh, coordinator or a treatment plan coordinator, as it is what we call them in our office. And that treatment plan coordinator is the first person that's actually going to have a conversation with them, besides the front desk maybe saying hello. Is that new patient coordinator in your office? It can be a manager. Um, but we, we really want to identify that type of person because the same person that's going to do those interviews in the beginning to build that relationship, they're going to come back at the end when they're all said and done to be in there with you when you're doing the treatment plan presentation. And so I've been in, I've been doing this for 17 years. And when you just, when you have a successful structure to a practice and that new patient experience is super exceptional, it just works out for the best. So when a new patient comes in, our new pa our treatment plan coordinator, our, our, our treatment plan coordinator goes in and says, welcomes them to the practice, even before sticking a bunch of papers in their face. We don't even want to do that. We invite them to come back and our treatment plan coordinator sits with them in one of the operatories and they begin to ask them questions. And we, we have a list of questions that we talk about. It is just to begin the dialogue. It's not so important what those answers are to those questions. And we go about that, we talk through that in the library, but what's really important is what the dialogue becomes from asking those questions and where it leads to. Because when you start leading that dialogue and you have these open-ended questions, it leads to that building a relationship with that patient dialogue. And so that's what's that's what becomes so special. Of course, we're gonna have time to fill out their name, date of birth, medical history. And we do that as we're doing handoffs and transitions. So one thing that really makes our practice successful is if a patient's not waiting when they first come into the practice and they're brought right back. And then while they're waiting for, if they're waiting for their assistant to come in to begin to take their radiographs or they're waiting for the doctor to come in to do the new patient exam, that's the time when they can start to fill out that paperwork that just becomes, you know, monotonous, overwhelming, and things that nobody really wants to do. So we want to get, get down to what addressing the patient's chief concern and their chief and complaints are, building that relationship, and doing that really starts off from that new patient exam, a new patient experience, from that interview. That interview just really sets the tone. So one of the things that when we when create part of creating that new patient experience is what I was alluding to before is after that interview is done, that we can now have a successful handoff to the assistant and we bring the assistant into the room and the treatment plan coordinator says, Melissa, this is uh, Mrs. Jones. She just came to our practice. I had a chance to talk with her and meet with her and uh, ask her about some of her concerns and she's worried about this tooth on the upper right or she's, she's missing some teeth on the lower left and she'd like to have those replaced, or if she's in pain in a certain area, just be careful. Because when you start to reword and say the things back to the assistant in front of that patient, it shows that you've been listening. It shows that you've been caring. And so when the, when the patient hears that and hears you say that to the assistant, they're like, wow, this is a different experience. This is a different place. Um, this is, I've never had an experience like this. And so when we do a successful handoff like that to the assistant, the assistant can come in, pick right up, and explain what they're going to be doing, taking the imaging of a, whether it's a bite wings or full mouth series in a pan or, or a CBCT to go through that. And after those, 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 those images are taken and that's been explained and those images are taken, we let them know, the, the assistant now says the doctor is going to be coming in to do that new patient exam. And so that new patient exam is the, the next most important part of the exceptional new patient experience of our second pillar here.
for successful dental practice. And that new doctor's new patient exam, one of the things that we want to do is we don't want to overwhelm them with verbiage. We don't want to overwhelm them with how much we know or four or five treatment plans. What we want to do is create a situation of low fear, no pain, building a relationship with high trust. Those are our goals. We really want to slow down these appointments. We slow down because when the procedures are scheduled and we get to speed up there, that's where we want to move quickly as we're doing our procedures. But in these time, this time of really be creating an exceptional new patient experience, we really want to slow down. So that those new those those that new doctor exam new patient interview handed off to the new the the examination that's going to be what's really great. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit. I want to roll to this slide a little bit of what that examination is like in my office. You know, I, I tell the patient after I, you know, I'm not coming into the room not knowing anything. What's, what's pretty cool and unique of what we do in our office is in the interim, as that assistant is taking that imaging, the treatment plan coordinator is coming to my office and basically downloading that interview to me. And so as she's downloading that interview, I get a sense of what this patient is looking for and what this patient's goals are. And as the, the, as the assistant is taking the imaging, I can look at those images on my computer. So I'm already, I'm already got my wheels turning of what I'm going to do and what am I going to talk about and what am I going to, how am I going to kind of tackle this new patient? And once I have my thoughts together and I go in there and I introduce myself to the new patient, I want to tell them, uh, you know, how I've been listening uh, to what my treatment plan coordinator said because I, I have that all written down and I'm asking some additional questions or asking a little bit more details, but I never want to repeat the same questions that the interview treatment plan coordinator asked during the interview because it doesn't show we were listening. We want to show that we we're listening and we want to be less superfluous. So that's, so that's, that's the goal. And, and as we're, as we're having that conversation, it's another ability to build that high trust and that, and that not just high trust, but that relationship that I'm talking about. Um, when I bring that patient back to do the examination and I come back around them from, from behind, because as we're having a conversation, you know, we're knee to knee, eye to eye. They're not laying down. I'm not standing over them. We're just at the same eye level. I let them know that what we're going to be doing is that, that examination and I'm going to be talking to my assistant with tooth numbers and surfaces and codes and I let them know that it's not to meant to confuse them but it's a meant to uh, a way to be efficient in the office and what I'm really doing is I'm going through the complete chart of all the teeth numbers in order of what we what they have what we see and what I'm recommending and so I kind of go through that two times and as I'm doing it I don't I the patient doesn't know if it's Number three, they have an existing MOD or existing BUCRN. That's our code language. BU crown, CRN, BU build up, CRN crown. They've had that before. So if, if I'm talking to them in that language or I'm right and I'm dictating to the assistant, the assistant's having an idea, hey, uh, the patients, excuse me, the patients have an idea saying, hey, I don't know, maybe this is the, some things I already have had and they don't know what they need to have. So it's in a way to have that code language with the assistant. It's important that the patient hears words like crown. Um, you know, you don't want to you don't want them to hear those words crown or bridge or implant because as soon as you start saying that, what happens? They're like cha ching cha ching. How much is this going to cost me? How much money is this going to be? So we want to use that that code verbiage. So I'll give you an example. Uh, somebody comes in. I said we're going to chart the existing to the to the assistant number two. Uh, MOL composite, number four, DO amalgam, number five, CRN, number seven, DL, ML, number eight, MILF, number 12, CRN, number 13, uh, RCT, CRN, RCT, root canal therapy, CRN. So I've got all these, all these surfaces in the code. And then I come back to the same teeth numbers and I say, oh, number two, fractured MO, the fractured composite, CRN or number four missing lingual cusp BU CRN build up crown. So when I'm talking in this code language, 
They just think that we are super professional, super efficient, really moving through this. And I, and that can, you know, after being doing this so long, we're going through this in less than 10 minutes here. And once that examination is done, we really want to make that patient feel comfortable. We want that patient to bring them up and they say, well, that sounded like a lot. Well, don't worry, a lot of that's what you already had. And, and we just want, we want to frame it into some an educational opportunity. And so that part of that exceptional new patient experience and that educational opportunities is coming together now. It's where when I tell the patient, and this is what works so well for me, when I know that in my mind that this treatment plan is going to be below $5,000, I want to print that treatment plan and present it the same day. Because that's not going to be a bunch, so much money with or without insurance that we're not going to be able to get them in a reasonable payment plan that it's going to work. But if something is complicated and it's maybe multifaceted or it's requiring either a specialist care or we're going to require maybe more than one option, I definitely want to have that patient come back for a treatment plan presentation. And what I do to create an exceptional new patient experience is I say this. I say, Mrs. Jones, I'm, I'm, I've done my examination. I have all your x-rays here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take those home with me. And when I take those x-rays and those images home with me, I'm going to study them and I'm going to come up with maybe one or two options of what we can get do to get your teeth back to full health. Now, those options may be some, something as simple as um, one with partials and one with implants, something that's removable and something that's fixed. Or you may want to throw a, a, a cosmetic component into it that you want to add that to it so you can at least discuss that in your treatment plan presentation. But what you do not want to do is you do not want to have that patient sitting there while you are creating for 20 or 30 or 40 minutes multiple treatment plans that you are now going to present to them that same day when they're not really your patient. They just got to know you. They, you're going to shock them with multiple options for tens of thousands of dollars. And so what I like to do is once I've done this new patient experience and created an exceptional environment, and I let them know that they're going to be coming back for that. I've never had a patient say, no, I want to know right now. The only time that's really happened is if a patient travels very far to come see me from a referral, usually out of state. And then we'll, I'll tell them to go grab lunch, go get a coffee. Let me have some time to put this together and come back and we'll, we'll do the treatment plan presentation afterwards. So that's, those are my, my tips for that new exceptional new patient experience. And I go into this in very, in much greater detail in the library of courses that I have. Um, the third pillar of best practices for successful dental practice is the treatment plan presentation and the closing of the case. So one of the things about the treatment plan presentation and of what I do is make sure that when you have that patient come back, that they had such a good time at their first new patient experience, you want to welcome them back, have a little bit of a social interaction, of course, and they're in, they're in the treatment plan room. I try to sit next to them during the treatment plan presentation. And so that I'm sitting on the next to them and the problem and the treatment plan and the dentistry is on that side of the table, that we're looking at a monitor together or we're looking at images together or we're looking at models together while the problem's out here. They really feel like that you're on their team. So that's one of the things that we work hard at doing is those treatment plan presentations that we're on that same side of the table. We're continuing to, we've been building that relationship and now we're going to start presenting the, the treatment that we've, that we've come up with. And when we talk about the, that treatment, we want to make sure that there is no hemming and hawing and maybe you could do this, well, you could do that. You want to be definitive. As the doctor, you are the doctor. You want to speak with authority and conviction. So you want to speak about this with with conviction, you want to know that this is one way to go. This is another way to go. You know, of course, you could blend some of those and you talk about multiple, different arches in different ways, but you don't want to give them too many options. Giving them so many options just gets them confused and they don't buy anything. Confused people do not buy. Do not sell hardware. You are selling a treatment to get them back to complete and full health. So that's what we uh, love to do during our treatment plan presentations is some of those little tips there about being on the same side of the table, being authoritative, speaking with conviction, 
but closing the case is just as important. So after I talk about the treatment plan and I say, Mrs. Jones, these are the options. And in order to fix your teeth, the one way that I, that we just got going done going through, it's $18,425. And to fix your teeth, this other way that we had talked about is $32,484. And then I'm quiet. I don't say anything. And my treatment plan coordinator is in the room with me, and she's writing a bunch of notes of any discussion that we're having to go in the patient's chart. And after we do that, I'm quiet. And they always have that adage when he who speaks first loses. I hate saying that, but the, the, honest, the honest truth is you want to let that patient understand and let, them, let that settle and then have them speak because you don't want to judge. They may are thinking for a while of how they're going to pay it, and then they say, I'd like to take option B. Or they may have some questions. But once they speak, they're, you're going, they're going to lead you of where you want, you want the next part of the conversation to go. I've had somebody come in and say, after they're quiet and for 30 seconds, it seems like eternity. They go, okay, you know, I really want to do this. I've talked a lot about it in my family, and I'd like to take the option where I get fixed teeth, having implants, and I'd like to go with that. I say, that sounds great, Mrs. Jones. We're going to find a way to get the treatment that you want to fit into your budget. And so I talk a lot about this verbiage and how to use these words in my library and my courses. And that's an important part of this. And so we're going to find a way to get fixed we're going to find a way to get the treatment that you want to work into your budget. And so now we've got different financial options. We work with local banks to help them. Um, signature, um, personal signature loans, Care Credit, Green Sky, Alfion. They're just, there's so many companies that are out there. We uh, sometimes play them off one another. But we want to, uh, sometimes I've had patients do HELOCs and all kinds of crazy things. Um, on top of HSA and all the, the normal things and dental insurance, we, we, do, we research their dental insurance in between their new patient exam and, and the treatment plan presentation. And if it's towards the end of the year, we're going to try to dip both years of, treat, of insurance into that same treatment plan so we get an accurate representation of what they're going to have to pay out of pocket. So we try to be as buttoned up as we can while we're crossing our T's, dotting our I's, and being organized and being together to make that, make that really come across as a professional thing. So those are the three main, I feel, pillars to be, have a successful dental practice is getting those patients in the door, having right verbiage, having the right front desk trained, identifying those types of callers and knowing that verbiage cold, creating an exceptional new patient experience and how we do that through the interview, how we're doing that through our handoffs and how we're doing that through our doctor's examination. And the last part, is the treatment plan presentation. Whether it's the same day or they're coming back for a, a larger presentation, what are the goals during that presentation? What are we trying to be? We wanna be authoritative, we wanna speak with conviction, we don't wanna hem and haw, and how we close that case by uh, showing them different payment arrangements and doing a handoff to our treatment plan coordinator to help them through those that financial component and how to make that treatment work for them, uh, that, that the payments work for them. Um, I'm really excited about sharing so much more of this. Um, I've spoken to this to dentists and staff around the country. I have gone to different offices and spoken uh, to staff members in their office. I have answered phones in other practices around the country to demonstrate this. It is a passion of mine to do this. And I think that you can always pay somebody to create leads to have them have them generate a lead to come to your office, but nothing is better than having that staff that you've trained, that you've worked hard, that is your family, to be on board to create the most successful experience for these patients by getting them in the door and having a great new patient experience. So thanks a lot. Um, once again, Anthony Corral from Admiral Dentistry. Uh, appreciate it.